Hello and welcome to this presentation on how to write Groovy scripts for QPath. So this um, video is basically a recording of a presentation that happened during the I2K conference and it is aimed at people who already have some basic knowledge of QPath but also some basic knowledge of programming but it doesn't have to be in Groovy. So uh, basically so the user interface of QPass is uh, the most user-friendly way of working with the software, but it has some limits. It can, it can take a lot of time. And also doing the analysis by hand doesn't encourage reproducibility, which is uh, something very important when you want to publish papers. And so as an alternative, we have scripts. So before actually going on scripts, I want to mention workflows. So in QPath, when you do some analysis, uh, the software will automatic, automatically record uh, most of what you do uh, through a workflow. So a workflow is a sequence of steps that have been applied to an image, for example, uh, uh, setting the image type or applying some cell detection algorithm. And so uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because uh, the documentation is, uh, is enough to explain what a workflow is and how to use it. But so basically, uh, so you see here I have QPass, I have an image, and uh, let's say I want to uh, create an annotation and then uh, apply a cell detection algorithm. So I have some cells here, and if I go to the workflow tab on the left panel, uh, you see that there is a history of everything that happened. And uh, so from that, you can click the Create Workflow button and uh, you'll see that we have a lot of steps. And so let's say I want to only keep the last one, the cell detection. So I will select everything else. I will right click and I will click on Remove. And then I, I just have this uh, cell detection step. And so that contains all of the parameters I used uh, during the detection. So the real usefulness of a workflow is that you can convert it to a script. So if you click the create script button here, uh, this new window will be will open. And so now you can see that we have one line which says a uh, run plugin. So run the watershed cell detection plugin. So this is useful because now if you close this and that, and you go to like, for example, another image uh, like this. You c I can now uh, select some part of the image. And if I just click on run, uh, the same algorithm will be applied on this image with the same parameters. And so it's a, it's a way of using the same algorithm on different similar images. So, uh, so what is a script? So a script is a sequence of instructions that are in interpreted by QPath. So for example, setting the image type, applying a cell detection algorithm. So this is quite similar to a step that uh, was described here, but a step is like a more human friendly way of describing some kind of analysis, while um, an instruction is a more computer friendly way of um, describing an, an analysis, so something QPass can actually understand. So, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, you can uh, convert a workflow to a script by uh, uh, clicking the Create Script button. Um, so this is actually the e easiest way of uh, working with the, with the scripts. You don't have to, to create one from scratch, you can just try to generate one. But it's not uh, always possible to do it. So sometimes uh, this will not work and you will have to write a custom script. So for that, uh, you will have to open the script editor window. Um, so basically you click on automate here and script editor and you have this uh, window here. And uh, so in QPath, scripts are written in Groovy. So it's a language that is similar to Python, but for the Java platform. So basically, if you have a, 
a Java background, just know that in Groovy it's possible to write code that is almost identical to Java, but uh, in general, Groovy gives more concise ways to achieve the same thing. And so you can uh, go to this link here, which uh, gives a comparison between uh, Java and Groovy. If you have a Python background, know that Groovy is a scripting language, so like Python, so they have some similarities, but they also have differences. So uh, I created a script, uh, a simple Groovy script that uh, sums up uh, some, some useful syntax, some useful basic syntax. So if you click on this link, you will see that uh, we have, like I have uh, created a few Groovy scripts that I will uh, present during this uh, presentation. So the first one is uh, this one, the basic Groovy, Groovy syntax script and it shows uh, some basic Groovy syntax that is not specific to QPath, but it's but it's quite it's quite useful to know to create any kind of uh, Groovy script. So let's go through it uh, quickly. So in Groovy, you use uh, the keyword var to declare a variable. So var some variable is equal to some value, so like Java. Then you can use println to print a variable. Uh, you see that we don't actually need parentheses in Groovy. So in function calls, so this is optional. Uh, then you can, uh, if you want to interpolate a variable value into a string, you can use uh, the dollar sign and some curly brackets. You can notice that uh, I didn't use any semicolon, so you can use it. Uh, you can use uh, them in Groovy, but this is optional. Then to create a list, it's like Python. You just use uh, some um, empty square brackets and then to add elements you use uh, the add function or those symbols and if you want to add uh, several elements to a list you can use the add all function then to access elements of a list you use uh, the same syntax as in python so square brackets and then the zero based index of the element you want to access so this is quite uh, this not new if you are coming from Java or Python. But so something quite specific to Groovy, to Groovy is uh, the concept of closure. So if you want to iterate over a list, you can use a for loop like in Python or in uh, Java. But there is a s something else in Groovy. So there is uh, this specific syntax here when where you write so the variable so, so some collection uh, variable. So here we have some list, and then you write dot each, and then you open some curly brackets. Then you define a name, so variable name, and then some uh, an arrow. And here you have a block code that will be executed for each uh, element of a list. So basically, what this code does is uh, that it iterates over each element of some list, and it will print uh, each element. So this is like the usual way to iterate over a list or to iterate over any collection in Groovy. So we have each to iterate. If you want to filter a list, so the syntax is quite similar, but you don't use each, you use find all. So here in this um, code here, we find all elements of some list that ends with uh, one. And so we get a new list and uh, and uh, this list is uh, like a filtered view of uh, the the original list so find all to filter and finally I, there is a third useful uh, function which is called collect and so this is used to transform elements of a list so same syntax use some list dot collect and then you return uh, a value like a transformed value of an element so here we uh, take the uppercase version of each element of some list. So you, so just to recap, you have each to iterate, find all to filter, and collect to transform. So this this was for lists. So um, also I want to mention that uh, if you want to create an empty map, 
So like a, like a map in Java or like a dictionary in Python, use uh, this notation. So square bracket and a colon. And uh, so like in Python, you use um, square bracket and inverted commas to access or to create an element of a map. And uh, yeah, and so this is also quite useful, but it's uh, a bit more advanced. So I will not mention this uh, now, but you can go back to this uh, later. So um, before actually starting to write a script, you can try to check if uh, the script you want to write already exists. And so for that, you can go to forum.image.sc with uh, the QPass tag. And uh, this is a collection of uh, a lot of topics that was that were created related to QPass. And so if you click on the search button here, you can try to search for the thing you want to do. And hopefully you will uh, find uh, something, uh, you will find a script uh, that someone has done before and that you can reuse. But so you should be careful because uh, if you find a script, uh, there is a slight chance that it can be outdated. So a script that was written for an earlier version of QPass is not guaranteed to work for the latest version. It can work, but it's not always the case. And also I want to mention that ChatGPT is not good, uh, is not good at generating QPass scripts because um, there is not enough data uh, for ChatGPT. So this almost never works. So if you can't find the script, so you will have to write your own custom script. So how to proceed? So in QPass, we have two files, uh, QP and QPEX, that contain uh, a lot of functions that can be useful to create a ba basic script. So for example, if you click on QP here, uh, this uh, provides a link to the documentation and you see that we have a list of functions so we have like the function name here and we have the description here and those functions so we have quite a few functions here and those functions can be useful to do this thing you want to do so uh, so we have qp and we also have qpex so which is basically um, more focused on like uh, the UI. But so there is a high chance that you will find a function useful for you in uh, this file. So let's uh, take an example. So uh, if I go back to image one, so uh, you see I have some detections here. And if I go to uh, measure show detection measurements, uh, you see that uh, so I have some uh, measurements for each detection here. So let's say that I want to add a new measurement to each uh, detection of this image. So here I want to add uh, like a new measurement here. Uh, so with a script. So how do I proceed? So I start by clicking on automate script editor. I can remove that. And uh, and have uh, yeah, so I have to write my script. So how do I start? So I said that um, there might be a function here that would be useful for me. So since I want to add a new measurement to each detection, so the first step step I want to do is to actually get all detections. So if I go here, I can try to find a function uh, that is uh, giving me each detection. So I can try to read uh, each, each line one by one, or I can just hit Control F or Command F on Mac. And uh, I want to get detection. So I just write get detection. And you can see that uh, we have this line here that comes up. And so this get detection objects function uh, returns a list of the current detection objects. So this is what I want. So I will just copy this. 
and I will uh, define a variable, let's call it detection, which is equal to get detection object. So if I run that, you can see that. Uh, so if I want, you can see that uh, I have like a, a list of cells. So this works. So now, what 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 do I want to do? So if you look at uh, the left part of uh, this line, you see that uh, so this describes what is returned by this function. So here uh, we have a collection of path object. So a collection is like a standard Java collection. I can click on this just to check, and you can see that it's like a yeah, like a Java collection, so something I can iterate on. And so, and then it's a collection of path object. So if I click on path object, you can see that uh, here we have like a QPath uh, object. So it's, it says it's like a fundamental object of interest in QPath. Okay, so I want to add a new measurement to each detection. So since I want to do some action on each detection, I want to iterate on uh, this detection. So if I go back to my uh, to my uh, basic Ruby syntax script here, I see that if I want to iterate over a list, I use the dot each syntax. So let's copy this, and I my list here is called detection, and so. Uh, NAR, uh, so this code will uh, print each, well, should print each detection of this uh, list here. So if I click on this, you can see that uh, we print uh, each uh, detection. Okay, so I don't want to print uh, detections, I want to, to get, to add a new measurement. So how do I proceed? So we need to work with uh, this element variable. So this element variable, actually we can call it detection, it will be more clear. And we want to get a, a measurement from it. So how do I proceed? So this detection variable is just uh, coming from this detection variable, which is coming from this get detection objects function. So if I go back here, I see that uh, this function here returns a collection of path object. So since we are iterating on it, I know that the detection here is a path object. So all of the functions that are present that are presented here can be used on this detection uh, variable. So as before, I want to get, I want to add a new measurement. So I want to get like a reference to some measurements. So I will hit Control F and I just type type get measurement and uh, uh, we see that we have two functions that come up. So there is this get measurement list function and this get measurements. So the two functions are used to to get some reference to the, the current measurements, but you can see that this one returns a measurement list, which is uh, some QPath specific object. And this one returns a map of string to number. So like a standard Java map uh, from a string. So it's like the, it should be like the measurement name to a number, which would be like a measurement value. So let's use uh, this one instead, because uh, I know how to work with maps. Uh, if you go back here, you can see that uh, I use this syntax here to work with maps. So let's use this one. So will uh, copy this and I will just uh, define a new variable measurement which is equal to, to detection dot get measurements so now uh, so I iterate on each detection of uh, the current detections and I get a reference to uh, a new uh, to the measurement of each detection so now I want to ha to add a new measurement to uh, um, to this variable here. So as I mentioned earlier, so here we got a map of string to number, and to add a new element to a map, 
use uh, this syntax so square brackets and inverted commas so let's use uh, this so here my measurement my map variable is variable is called measurements and uh, say I want to call it new measurement and uh, I don't know I want to set it to let's say I want to set it to like for example uh, two times uh, the nucleus area so I want to set it two times uh, the measurement the nucleus area measurement and if I click on run so it it stopped so something happened and if I just reopen this measurement window so you can see that now we have this new measurement uh, measurement which is uh, with uh, some values and each value is two times uh, the nucleus area here so it's done so we are we now have a new measurement we uh, we created a new measurement for each detection um, just by using a function of QP so something I didn't mention uh, here is uh, that so you see we used two functions so get detection objects and then get measurements and so here we used uh, so we so here in the get measurements uh, function you, you see that we used detection dot get measurements and here we did, didn't use anything uh, like there is nothing nothing uh, before that so uh, the reason is that uh, for the get detection objects you can see that it's a static function so when it's a static function you don't have to um, specify an object before you can just use uh, the function like this but uh, here the get measurement is not static so static is not uh, written here so when it's not static you need to specify an object to to work with so this is the difference but so yeah but so this is how to create a basic script in Cubase. so if you are lucky enough you will find a function in QP or in QPEX that will be useful for you and then you just have to click on what the function returns and it will give you a list of functions and hopefully hopefully this will be enough for your uh, use case so uh, this is how to proceed so some of these functions are presented in the documentation uh, so in cupas.readthedocs.io uh, I also want to mention the website of Mike Nelson so uh, imagescientist.com uh, because he created a lot of uh, uh, scripts um, for QPass and also some tutorials on how to write them so this can be useful if you uh, are a beginner in uh, writing Groovy scripts uh, I want to mention something also so you see that uh, when I want to run a script like this I click on the run but there is an option to run a script on uh, different images of a project so uh, for that you can click the three dots here and you click you can click on the run for project so this will open a window where you select uh, some images of uh, the current project so here I selected everything and I click on OK and it will uh, apply this uh, script on uh, on uh, every images of my project so this is one way of uh, of like of uh, applying a script on uh, different images uh, you can just use a uh, run for project but so in this um, um, uh, repository here I also uh, I have like another way so uh, let's copy this script. So this script is um, creating. A, so it's doing two things. So it's creating an annotation covering the entire image, 
and then it's uh, applying a cell detection algorithm on the current image on the selected annotation. So if I click on run, you will see what happens. So there is an annotation covering the entire image that was created. And then uh, uh, some like a cell detection algorithm was applied on uh, the newly created annotation. So uh, uh, you can see that, uh, so I have two images in my project. So this one, and if I go back to image one, but I click on uh, run for project, okay, it will, uh, it will run this algorithm on uh, the two images. And just to check, if I open image two, you see now that you see that now it has some uh, detections. So this is one way of uh, of uh, applying a script on different images, but it's not the only way. So there is another way, which I explained here, uh, in which you don't click on run, but you click on run for project. And so. Uh, Basically, so yeah, so just to also to just to be clear, so this uh, function here comes from uh, QP, and this function here comes from uh, a workflow converted to a script. So I'm not detail, uh, not explaining how I got them, but so basically, it's um, you can get them by uh, following what I did uh, before. So looking at QP and also converting a workflow to a script. But so anyway, uh, if I uh, create a new script and I paste, paste this. So, uh, so this is a, a new algorithm, a new script. But so I say that this script is doing the same thing as this one. So if we look at the script briefly, so you can see that, uh, so first we get the current project. So it's a function coming from QP. Then we get the images of uh, the, the project so here it would be image one, image two. Then we iterate over each image. Uh, we get some image data from the image. Then we create uh, an annotation covering the entire image uh, with this function. Then we run the cell detection algorithm to the provided image. And then we save uh, the annotation and the newly created detections. And so this script uh, can be run by clicking on run and so it's doing the same thing as this one but so this one we used run for project and this one we use run and so the difference is that here we are creating a script that work on the current image so you see like we don't specify any image here uh, so it will work on the current image. But here, what we do is we manu manually iterate over each image and the two like the two useful function, like uh, create annotation and run plugin, you can see that they are a bit different because here we have two parameters, image data and true. And here we had only one. It's because here we are specifying that we want to create the annotation not on the current image, but on the provided image, so this image that we are iterating on. And so same thing for run plugin. So here we had only two parameters, and here we have we have three. We have three because we have this image data because we want to apply the cell detection algorithm to this image we are iterating on. And so you can see that uh, it's more complex so we have like more lines and also we have to specify new parameters. So my recommendation is that when you want to uh, to run a script on different images, just use uh, just create a script that works on the current image and then click on the run for project. And so uh, avoid uh, manually iterating on each image of a project because it's just more complex. Uh, but in some situations, you might have to do that. And so if you have to manually iterate over images, uh, just be sure to use functions that work on the image that you provide and, 
function that don't work with current images because when you look at QP, uh, like a lot of functions of this file are working with the current image so you can see that by looking at uh, the description of the uh, function so here for example get detection object will get a, lit get, get a list of the current detection object and so it will work on the current image if I get if I um, I don't know use like this one for example get current image name it will return the name of the current image so these functions can only be used in that situation but they cannot be used in this situation because here you are not working with the current image you are working with the image that you iterate on so yeah so just a quick note on run and run for project um, so uh, so in most situations the functions of QP and QPS, QPEX will uh, be enough to do the analysis you want to do but sometimes it's not and so if it's not you will have to look at uh, the java doc so it is available online like this but it's also available if you click on uh, on help and show java docs so uh, so how to proceed if you want to do some something that is not allowed by qp so three steps first you search for the thing you want to do so you try so you use the java doc you try to find a class that is useful for uh, the thing you want to do uh, once you find it you will have to import it and finally you can use it so let's do an example so since uh, QPass 0.6, you can um, you can um, export an image to the ZAR format, uh, but so there is no function in QP that allows it. So I need to find a function of QPass, like a core function of QPass that uh, uh, that that performs the ZAR export. So to do that, you go to the this javadoc viewer window, but you can also use uh, the website if you prefer. And you can see that there is a search bar here. And if you click on search, so since I want to export a ZAR image, I will just type ZAR. And you can see that uh, we have some uh, suggest suggestions here. So let's take the first one. Let's uh, expand this a bit. And if I go to the top of the page, uh, you can see that there is this omizarwriter.builder class and it says that it's a builder to create an instance of an OMIZAR writer. Okay, and if I click on this, so here the description says that it's a class that can be used to create an OMIZAR file. So this is what I want to do. So this is a class I want to use. So the first step here, search for the thing you want to do, is done. Because we have a class, we know that we want to use this class to do the thing we want to do. So then uh, the next step was to import the class. So to import a class, so let's skip this here. You just uh, go to your script and you click on import. You write import. And then you can see that at the top of the file here, uh, there is a package and you just copy this package to control C, you passed it, and then you add a dot, and then you copy the class name, control C, control V. And so this is, so you have to do this when you use a, a core function or a core class of QPass. You have to import it first. So this is done. And now we can actually use the class. So how to use it? So to know how to use it, you will have to look at the documentation. So here it says that it can be used to create a ZAR file, right? Then it says that we need to use an OMIZAR writer .builder to create an instance of this class. So this is uh, where we, we want to start. So let's click on this. And uh, so I want to create uh, so an instance of this class and this uh, uh, class will then be useful to create an instance of a, a ZAR writer. So 
if I look at the constructor summary, I can see that there is one function. Uh, so if I click on it, so this is a constructor. It has two parameters. So server, so the image to write. So here, let's say we want to write uh, uh, like the current image. So we need to find a way to get like a reference to the current image. And then the second parameter is the path where to write the image, it must end with omi.zar, which doesn't already exist. Okay, so first let's, let's uh, find some values for those two parameters. So briefly, if you go to cube, so first we want to get the server, like the current server. So if you go to QP, uh, uh, you, uh, so same as before, uh, I know it work. Uh, I know I can find a like getting the current server is like a basic thing, so it's likely to be found in this file. So if I just type uh, get a current server, you can see that we have this function here get current server, which is used to get the image server of the current image data. So let's use this. So I just define a, a variable server, which is equal to get current server. So I have my first variable and the second variable is a string, which is uh, the path where to write uh, the image. So let's define a, a, a random path. Uh, let's use uh, yeah, let's use, uh, for example, yeah, my current directory. And let's, so if you see the description, it says that it must end with .omi.zar. So we'll call it test.omi.zar. And so now I have my two parameters. And now I can use uh, this function. So it's a constructor. So to use a constructor in Groovy, you use the new keyword. So like in Java. So you use new, then you use the class name. So here it's omizarwriter.builder. And then you open some brackets and then you specify the two parameters that were described here. So the server and the path. And so this gives me a builder. So I can define a new variable builder. And so now I have an instance of this class here. So what can I do with it? Well, I just look at the method summary and uh, I want to, so the initial goal was to get a, a writer from this. And if I look at the first function, you can see that uh, there is a, a build method which returns an OMSR writer. So this is what I want to, to use. So I define a new variable, writer, let's call it writer, and it's builder dot build like this so now the writer variable is an omizar writer so now we have an instance of this class so now we can use the functions of this class so uh, if i just uh, continue looking at the description so it's so it said use an omizar writer dot builder to create an instance of this class so this is done now it says this class is uh, thread safe, but already uses this concurrency internally to write tiles. So I don't really understand this line, so I don't really care. And finally, it says that uh, this writer has to be closed once no, no longer used. And if, if I click on closed, it points to a function close uh, uh, of this writer. So I know that at the end, Let's do it here. I will have to uh, call close. I don't really know why, but here it says to do it, so I will do it. Um, but so we didn't actually write the image. So now, but now we can look at the method th summary. And so all functions that are available for uh, uh, this uh, object here, uh, this writer. And so the first function is uh, the close function. So we already used it, so we know what this is. Then there is a get reader server function, which is used to get the image server used internally by this writer to read the tile. So I don't 
also really understand this, so it's not useful. I don't use it. But then we have this write image function, which is used to write the entire image. Okay, so this is useful. So I will use this function here. So as before, so this function is not static, so I have to specify my writer dot write image. And this is it. So if I click on uh, run, I see that uh, there is an error. It's because I didn't specify inverted commas here. And if I click on run again, so it stopped. If I check, I can see that I have my uh, zar file, uh, zar image, which is a directory here. And this is done. So just to recap, so the first thing we did was to search for uh, a class that was useful for our, our use case. Then uh, we imported the class using uh, the import uh, keyword and then package dot class name. And then we, you, we read the documentation to see how to use uh, this class. And this is basically the way to proceed uh, when you want to create advanced scripts. So this requires to have some good documentation. So hopefully this is the case, but it's not always uh, happening like that. So sometimes you will have to look at the source code. And so it's available on, on GitHub. Uh, I want to mention that you can execute a script from the command line. So I'm not uh, spending a lot of time on this because uh, the documentation is uh, is enough for this part. But so basically you specify uh, the path to your QPath uh, executable, then you write script. And then if you want to run a script on a single image, you specify the I parameter and you then give the path to your image and then you specify the path to your script and so this is a equivalent of like uh, clicking on uh, on run here but if you want to uh, to run a script on uh, different images of a project so you don't use i but you use p and then you specify the path to your uh, qproj uh, file within your project and so it's like equivalent of clicking on run for project uh, but you can find more information on the documentation um, so then what to do when an error occurs so when an error occurs so this happened when i didn't specify inverted commas here when an error occurs uh, you will get this kind of message so this is called a stack trace and uh, so it's like a list of the me method calls that the application was in the middle of when an exception was uh, thrown. So how to read that? So you will see that uh, one of the function call here will uh, correspond to uh, a line of your script. So here you can see that uh, we have this, uh, well, we have this line here, which which says uh, something wrong. Something is wrong with um, my line five of my script. And if I look at line five, you can see that uh, here I try to define a string, but I did not use inverted commas. So this is uh, uh, this can be show. This can be seen here, but you can also look at so the first line. So the first line also give generally a message that indicates what kind of error you have and this can also give this can also give some information on, on where the error is so uh, yeah so so this is what I mentioned here so the error is briefly detailed on the first line of the stack trace so you have to understand it and so like two usual errors we see a lot is uh, the no signature of method so it's when a function you use doesn't exist so for example uh, so if i put back my inverted commas but here i uh, i create a typo in my function here we'll get this no signature of method uh, 
so you can see that the this function here doesn't exist so this happens when you write a typo but it, it can also happen uh, when you use a script that already exists and uh, but is outdated so like this outdated script use a function that disappeared or that was renamed and so you will get this error so you will need to find a, a new function that uh, exists now and uh, we also get we also often get this null pointer exception so if i go back to this script here for example you can see that uh, the first time is getting the current project so this work if you have a project open like this but if i close my project so uh, now we don't have any more we don't have any project anymore and if i click on run you will see that uh, we have this error cannot invoke method get image list on null object like line number five so here we have an exception that is thrown at this line it's because this get project function returned null like the null object because we don't have any current project and when we try to use this null object uh, an exception was uh, thrown so here uh, it's a bit subtle because here it says that the error comes from this line here but actually the the issue of the script is coming from that line here because uh, here we got a null uh, variable which is not good and this is what uh, caused the error but so the actual error was uh, thrown after the actual issue in our code so you need to be aware of that um, but so if you can, cannot find the codes or the error, you can post a message on image.sc with a full stack trace. Uh, I also want to mention that uh, so this script editor here is quite minimalist, and so we don't have any uh, we don't uh, have like a lot of useful features that are uh, usually integrated in modern IDE. So within our within the QPass team, we use IntelliJ. Uh, to uh, work with uh, Java and Groovy and so you can follow the instructions that are detailed on this uh, GitHub repository to use IntelliJ to uh, uh, write Cuba scripts and so basically I, so I followed the instruction and I have this uh, IntelliJ and so I have this folder here and if I click, uh, click on new Groovy script I can call it test and uh, now I can write a script and uh, so for example uh, let's say I want to do the same thing as uh, before here uh, let's say uh, yeah so let's yeah let's say I want to do the same thing as here so the first step was to get a reference to the current server so here I define a server variable and uh, so here the difference is that when you want to use a function of QP so like get current server was a function of QP you need to specify you need to write QP so like this and then you use dot and I want to use get current server but you can see that I have some uh, suggestions of which function to use so this is very useful and this is uh, especially useful when you are a beginner with uh, scripts because here you don't have to look at um, the documentation actually because if you just over over this uh, variable, you can see that uh, we have like an image server, and uh, we can see the documentation from here. But if I also want to use a function of this server, you can just write server dot, and here it will uh, suggest me a, uh, any like any function that I can use with this server. So if I want to get uh, I don't know like uh, like the metadata for example i can just write metadata and then if i want to get uh, like uh, the number of time points for example i can just write time and it will give me uh, like the time unit for example like this so it's very useful because then you don't actually have to look at the documentation it's it's much faster and easier to write scripts so i encourage you to to look at this uh, uh, repository 
and to set up uh, IntelliJ and use IntelliJ instead of this uh, script editor. So we are working on creating a new script, script editor, which would be more powerful than this one. But until, until it is ready, I suggest to use uh, IntelliJ. So this was it for this presentation. So just a recap. So if you want to automata automatize an, an analysis that was previously done by hand, you can use a workflow converted to script. So you use run to run on the current image or run for project to run on the current project. If this is not possible, the first step is to search for an existing script on image.sc. If you don't find any script, you can use functions of QP and QPEX. Uh, so they give a lot of basic functions that can do a lot of things. And if you don't find anything relevant here, you will have to use uh, the javadoc to create a more advanced script. So if you have difficulties in writing a script, you can always create a, a post on image.sc. Uh, so preferably we have like a, a simple image and if you uh, started your script, you can also uh, mention this and uh, we can uh, help you with, uh, with that. So thanks for watching.